Okay, good morning, everyone. So today we are going to continue with pointers. Uh, we'll start with a quick review and then uh, we'll continue and uh, try to see what is uh, dynamic memory allocation. So starting with two announcements, the first thing that we have tomorrow, the supplementary lecture. And please, if you still like want to learn more about pointers, uh, make sure to attend it. It will be on Discord uh, from 12 to 1 p.m. And uh, also, like um, after a discussion with the TA, they told me like some of you are using a lot of or at least some global variables uh, in the lab. So please make sure that you are not using global variables except like no way other than using them. Okay, but otherwise, just make sure to uh, use like variables locally, either in the main function or in the user defined function. Okay. Most of the time we are using um, the global variables in uh, limited like situations only because again, they are changed by any function, right? So if you have many functions, this global variable can be changed with any function. So we have to be cautioned while using them. Okay, so let's review very quick uh, what we had last time. So we started with saying, hey, we have pointers. Uh, they are regular variables except that they are having in the memory uh, or they are storing location or the memory location of another variable, right? As you can see here, I have a variable which is ha having a value of 10 and then I have a pointer which is pointing to this value. And as you can see, it is storing the address of this variable which is called var. And then we, we said that we are using two main operators here, the end operator, and this is always used to get the address and the asterisk or star, which is used to get the value. And we talked about the common mistakes that maybe you are going to have during uh, working with pointers, which is mainly if you are assigning a pointer to a, va a value or, or a variable. In this case, actually make sure that you are assigning address to an address or value to a value, right? So for example, here we said that you can't say pointer C equals to C. Why? Because actually this is an address, this is a value, right? So this can't be assigned in this way. Same thing here. This is a value, right? So asterisk PC, this will get the value, whatever, whatever the pointer is pointing. And then here, this will give an address. So again, this is not a right assignment. So just make sure that you are going with the right uh, thing either value to value or address to address. Okay, and the last thing we were talking about the null pointer and just making sure that while you are working with your pointer at a certain point, you have to assign the pointer to a certain address, right? So for example here, if you try to start with having a pointer which is not initialized and then trying to get a certain value and just update the value of whatever variable you are pointing to. Since you are not pointing to anything, at this point actually you are going to get an error. And the problem here is that the error you are going to get is not during compiling, but actually during runtime, right? When you run, you will get like an error saying core dump and you are not having any description of this error, okay? So one of the things actually to avoid such an error is to put your own error message. What the meaning of that? If you look at this here, you'll find that I'm actually trying to print an error message if the pointer is not assigned, okay? So here I'm saying if pointer equals equals null. What I have to do, just print this message, which is print f error memory not allocated and then exit zero, okay? Why I'm doing this? And instead of getting uh, the error which is saying code dumped and you don't know actually what happened exactly, you are creating your own error message, okay? So every time you are allocating memory to pointers, you can just put this very quick condition, right? As it is, and will never change from a program to the other except that you are going to change the pointer name based on the name you are using. But otherwise, this will be in all your programs that are using memory allocation uh, for pointers, right? So once you are having your pointer and then allocate memory and then make sure that the memory is allocated in the right way, okay? Okay, so 
last time we ended up without doing this one. So here is saying, uh, and by the way, I put it on the discussion board and only, I think 29 uh, attempt to do it. It's like a lot of them did it, right? But I think we are more than 100. So I was expecting more uh, to attempt it. Okay, so it's saying here, implement the following code by defining end copy A as an integer pointer variable called pointer A. Okay, so instead of just a regular variable, copy A, I want to change it into a pointer variable and name it pointer A. Keep end uh, as an integer variable. Okay, so let's... Let's try to modify this program here. So the original program is starting with int a equals 215 and then int copy a equals to a. So I have here two variables. One is called a and one is called copy a, right? These two variables are independent. All agree? They are independent. What the meaning of that? If you updated one value, the other value will not be updated, right? So this is why here actually, I want to say, okay, uh, copy A will equals to A, right? So take the value, which is 15, and put it in the other variable, which is called copy A. And then the next line, A divide equals to 3, right? So take the old value of A, which is 15, divided by 3, we'll get 5, assign it to A again. Then here, copy the value of A and put it in copy A. So I will take 5 and put it in copy A, right? Next copy a plus plus so in this case you will just add one to the value right so copy a itself now will be six and a will be five right and then a equals to copy a so in this case now both of them are having the value of six next if copy a equals to a yes so do the following prints and you have three print functions and that's it. okay so now we understand how this program is doing it's trying to just follow copy a is following a right or a following copy a so once you change one of them you have to update the other right so if we try to go and change copy a here into another variable which is a pointer variable okay so in this case i will just name it pointer a and i have to make sure that i declare it right so i just put here as a pointer and then this line is okay we are changing the value of a and now i don't need this one why i don't need it because since pointer a okay is or will be since i will do that now will be a pointer pointing to the variable a in this case i don't need this one so the only thing i need here is to assign this pointer to point to A, right? So how to assign this pointer to point to A? Just put this here, right? This is the only difference. So here I declared a pointer named pointer A and I assigned it to the address of A. Okay, so now it's pointing, and in this case, I don't need this at all. Once I say a divide equals to three, in this case, actually, a will be updated to three, and the pointer a is pointing to the same value. So I don't have actually to use uh, copy a equals to a or pointer a equals to. A. Then, next, I have copy a plus plus. So previously, I was taking this variable and adding the value by one, right? So now I have to change this because I, I have a pointer now, right? So instead of doing this, I will do the following. Asterisk pointer A. What did I do here? I said, get the value of pointer A, right? So asterisk pointer A is getting the value, right? Which now is five, and then plus plus will add to get six, right? Do I need the next line? Since the pointer A and A are dependent variables, right? Both of them depends on each other. So they are automatically updated. So I don't need actually to do this, right? So in this case, again, I don't need this line, right? All agree?
Okay, so from here, if you try to follow the program, I started with A equals to 15, so, and then assign a pointer to point to A, and then A now will be updated to five, and then the pointer will increment the value of A by one, so now A is six, and the pointer is pointing to a value which is six, right? So, this update, I will just again update it to pointer, and then, is it right in this way? Is this condition right? Please say no. Why? Because now I'm assigning an address to a value. Just make sure to put the asterisk here because now you are assigning a value to a value, right? So now we are comparing the values that the pointer is pointing to with the value of A, right? Which actually both of them are exactly the same. So going on, you'll find that I will just go to the three print statements here. So first one is And again, don't forget the asterisk. In this case, I'm going to get the value that the pointer is pointing to. And here A as it is. And let me just update these here, pointer, and this here. Again, asterisk, and then pointer. Right, and let's try to run it, just to make sure that everything is going right. So GCC. So it gave me the value of pointer A equals to six, the void of the value of a equals to six and saying that both of them equals to each other. Any question? So one other thing actually, if you remember how I incremented the pointer, I just said pointer and then plus plus, right? This is how I incremented the pointer. You can do it in the regular way, which is pointer equals to pointer plus one. That's totally fine, okay? So you can do it also in this way. Okay, so one good practice actually while working with pointers is to make sure that you are putting something with the variable name to tell you that, hey, make sure that you are dealing here with a pointer. For example, most of the time when I'm naming my variables, the last example I'm saying pointer underscore A, right? Right? So every time while you are dealing with pointers, just try to make sure that you are putting something to remind you, hey, remember, this variable is not a regular variable. This variable is a pointer. Why? Again, to avoid forgetting the and or forgetting the asterisk and so on. So just make sure that every time you are naming your pointer, but anything to tell you that, hey, this is a pointer. Okay. So for example, a variable name and then underscore pointer or PTR and then underscore the variable name, whatever the way you want to use it, but just put anything to tell you that this is, this is a point. Okay, so there is a good question here. Do you have to have the parentheses when doing uh, pointers so here? So actually next week we are going to deal with this. We will take a lot of examples to see, like if I have the parentheses, what will happen? If I'm not having it, what will happen? Which one actually will apply first, the incrementation or the asterisk, which is getting the value? Because if I did this, or this, Okay, but let me answer your question next week since we are going to deal with pointers and arrays. And actually arrays, we have a lot of addresses, right? So in this case, we want to see when we increment the address, what will happen. So this actually, we are going to um, work on it next week, okay? Okay, so this is our good practice and please remember to do it usually. And then uh, now, as we saw in, in the last example that you can increment your pointer, right? 
So pointers actually can be incremented or, or decremented. So for example, you can say pointer plus plus or pointer minus minus, for example. So just asking the pointer to go to the previous address or the next address, okay? And as you can see, most of the time we are using this with arrays. Why? Because we have a lot of addresses, right? The array is having, let's say, 10 elements. So I want now to deal with this element or the next element or the next element or the previous element. So as you can see, you can control this, right? You can control where the pointer can go. So this is why we always dealing with uh, the arithmetic operations like uh, pointer plus plus or pointer minus minus and so on. Also, you can uh, add pointers or subtract uh, a pointer from a pointer. That's also totally fine, you can do it. Okay, so for example here, if you try to uh, say, a pointer equals to the pointer plus two. What's the meaning of that? The meaning actually that you are incrementing two, but like two addresses or two what? So if you remember in the memory, we are reserving based on, reserving the memory based on the type, right? So for example, if you remember with me, uh, if my type is n, then you are reserving four bytes, right? So in this case, if the pointer type is n, you'll find that I have the first memory is taking four bytes, the second one, four bytes, four bytes, and so on. So in this case, actually, if I said, um, let's say pointer A, underscore A, equals pointer underscore A plus one, this means that we are incrementing not one in the memory, but we are incrementing four bytes, okay? So for example, if I have a pointer which is named val pointer, okay, and this pointer is a double, what's the size of the double? Right? The type, which is double, is reserving in the memory eight bytes. So if I try to go here and say val pointer equals to val pointer plus two, you will find that if the original address is this one, the next address would be assigned to val pointer equals to uh, this address. What's the difference between the two? You'll find that 16 bytes, right? If you add it to the first one, why it is 16? Because here I incremented two and you have actually to multiply two by eight to know where is the next pointer, okay? So I incremented two and my type is double, in this case, actually, you will go eight, eight. So this is why actually the next address, the pointer will point to is incrementing 16 from the previous address, okay? This is very important to understand how the pointer is jumping, okay? It's jumping based on the type of the pointer. If I'm an end pointer and did the same thing, so in this case, I will jump eight only, not 16, okay? Any questions so far? Questions? Again, I'm trying to go one by one, um, trying to wait for your questions because I want to make sure that everyone is understanding all the concepts that, that we are going to go over, okay? So um, again, if you have any question anytime, please let me know, okay? And um, I'm still on the voice channel in Discord and uh, I'm monitoring here the uh, text channel uh, of the lecture. Okay, so, if you remember, uh, size of here is a keyword in C that if you just write size of and any variable, okay, variable name, in this case actually will give you its size. So for example, uh, if the previous variable here, which is val pointer, if I just put here size of val pointer, okay, um, it's going to give the size of the type itself, okay? So for example, if I have int a and I put here size of a, this will give me four, okay? So one good thing actually to do it is here I have double array 10. So this means that you are reserving 10 elements for this array. Then size of double, I know that size of double is eight, right? So in this case, this, function will return eight. 
and then size of array. Size of array will give you the following. Since the array is having 10 elements, and each element is a double element, which is reserving eight, so this is going to return 80, right? Okay, so finally, you can use this here to get the size of or number of elements in the array, right? So as we will see later on, maybe you don't know like how many elements in your array. So in this case, how to get the number of elements, you can just have size of array divided by size of double. And if you did that, you will just have 80 divided by eight, which will give 10, and 10 here is the size of your array, okay? So this is just one way of trying to uh, get your array size because as we will see now, we are going to play with the array and now the size will not be uh, fixed all the time. You can change the size at any point uh, in your runtime. So let's now look at what we was doing from the beginning of the semester until now. Every time you're writing a program, you're saying, let's say, int a equals 215, right? So in this case, we named this as static memory allocation. What the meaning of static memory allocation that while writing the program, you are assigning a, okay, to be an int variable, reserving four bytes, and the value there will be 15, okay? So this is why we name it as static. Also, if it is an array, you are saying, hey, I'm declaring an array, okay, which is having 10 elements, okay, and you do that while writing the program, okay? So this is static, because once you run the program, this array size will never change, okay? So for example, let, let's say I'm, I'm developing a program to uh, a professor in another course, and then while writing the program, I asked him how many students you have? And he told me like I have um, 200 students. Okay, so end array 200, right? So what about like saying, okay, um, what about next year? How many students you have? He'll just say, I don't know. It, it can go down or up, right? So the only way I'm going to do it and to be as in the safe side, I would say, okay, um, since I'm going to, to do, write the program now for the next year, I will just put the maximum and I put like a int array equals to or, or array size 500 and that's it, right? Just to be in the safe side. But I don't have any other option. I don't have the option that to give the instructor of the course uh, okay, here is the program and you can enter the number of students and the array will be created for you. With a static memory allocation, I can't do that. You have to assign your size at the beginning while writing the program, okay? So this is here what we call the static memory allocation. So the limitation here is that you only can write the size of the array while writing the program. You can do it actually with the runtime so that the user can enter it. You don't have this option. Yes, we can use, if you remember, scan F and get like some numbers from the users, right? But for the array size, you can do that. If you are using static memory allocation, you have to start that from the beginning, from writing the program. So this is a big limitation here. This is why actually we go to what we call dynamic memory allocation. So what is dynamic memory allocation? In dynamic memory allocation, you are actually assigning the size of the array during the runtime. So you don't have to assign the size of array while writing the program. You will just adjust everything. And then when the runtime starts, when your program is running, you will just ask the user, hey, can you enter the number of elements in your array? And then I will take this number and create the array for him. So with pointers, we can do this. Without pointers, which is everything from the beginning of the semester until before this week, we only can assign during writing the program and that's it, okay? So the first thing, the first option or good option here is that you can, during the runtime, you can just assign whatever the uh, array size. So in this case, actually, I can choose it for my class 200. Next year, I will choose it 150 and so on. I can change it every time I'm running the program, okay? Uh, also, you can change the allocated memory within the runtime. So in this case, actually, um, maybe I will start with uh, 100 and then change it to 200. 
So here is a comparison, quick comparison between dynamic and static memory allocation. So in a static memory allocation, memory is allocated while writing the C program. Actually, user required um, memory will be allocated at compile time. So while writing it, put uh, the memory locations that you need, and then it will be assigned while compiling the program, right? But in dynamic memory allocation, it's saying that, okay, memory is allocated while executing the program. So during the runtime, right? Uh, also, another thing that we compare between them, here we have memory size can be modified while execution. And this is very important. Static memory allocation, you started with 10, you will end with 10, right? But here, memory allocation or memory size can be modified while execution, okay? And here an example is uh, linked lists. And we will hear about links, linked lists later, okay? Okay, so what are the functions actually that we are using here to dynamically allocate the memory? So we have these functions. The first one is called C allocate. The second one is called M allocate. And both of them are actually exactly similar to each other except only one difference. I will uh, mention it later on, okay? So there is a question here. So with a static allocation, we have to set a limit when we don't know the total number. You have to set a number. You have to set a size, okay? So this is why when I told you, like when someone is asking me to write a program and I ask it like, what is the maximum number of students? You don't know, okay, I will just put a number and that's it. I will put 500, I will put 1000 and that's it, right? But if you are dealing with big data, the limitation of the number is very important because let's say we are dealing with 100,000 uh, size, right? So I can say, okay, I will put it 1 million, that's it. Hey, you are eating my memory actually. Right, so you have to be cautious of the number you are putting. So the numbers, the small numbers we are dealing with now, that's totally fine. But if the numbers are very big, can you just expect any number and that's it? No. So the only solution here is to use dynamic memory allocation, okay? So the first two here are very similar and used to allocate memory. This is why it's called uh, allocate or A-L-L-O-C, which is for allocate. Um, and the only difference here, C allocate actually, when it is allocate any memory locations, it's put all the elements equals to zero. For M allocate is not doing that. It's just leaving any values in the memory as it is and not changing anything, okay? Then reallocate, as I told you, you can, during the runtime, change the allocated memory. You can just have starting with 100 size and then change it to 200. And how you can do this using the reallocate and from its name actually, right? You are reallocating the memory. And then last one is free. So what is free here? Since you are now manually, and remember, manually managing the memory, okay? So in this case, you will reserve, and after finishing whatever you are doing, you have to clean up everything. And why cleaning up everything? Because while you are doing this, let's say on your computer, you know that whatever, whenever you are going to close your terminal, in this case, everything will be uh, cleared, right? But if you are dealing with a, dev a device which is having limited memory, what the meaning of that? Let's say you are dealing with um, embedded systems and embedded systems actually you have limit limited memory. So in this case, you have to make sure that, okay, I will allocate memory here, do whatever I'm going to do, and then free up the memory and then allocate the memory again and so on. So you can just clean up and reallocate the memory, clean up and reallocate the memory. So this will be actually utilizing the memory that you have, okay? So this is why actually cleaning up the memory is very important, which is using here free. And you just use free with the name of the pointer and that's it. So here are uh, my functions, which are five functions. And by the way, to use these functions, you have to use a standard library.h. Okay, so all of them actually are defined inside this header file. So the first one is m allocate, and this is the syntax. This is how you can write it. So m allocate, and then number multiplied by size of int. What is this number? We are talking about arrays, right? So this number will be. You are saying four. It's not a specific number. This is the size of the array, right? So you are creating a new array, right? During the runtime, what is the size of this array? 
will be number, right? And from where you will get this number? Ask the user. Print F, please enter the number of elements you want in your array, and then scan F number, right? You will just get this from the user. And at this point, actually, you will create in the memory an array which is having number, number of elements, which is the user if entered 15. So in this case, you reserve 15. And in this case, actually, here, it's saying size of ends, right? So it will just multiply 15 by size of end, which is four, right? So in this case, I will just reserve 15 memory locations. Each one is four bytes, okay? For example, if I'm doing it for doubles, so I would say M allocate, and then number multiplied by size of double. That's it. So just put the type, the size of the type of the pointer and then multiply the number of elements and that's it, okay? And by now, you reserve the memory, okay? During the runtime, not during compilation. Remember, in static memory allocation, you say int array 15 and then compile. At this point, it will reserve the memory, right? Now, during the runtime, you ask the user, enter the number of elements and then m allocate, this will allocate the memory during the runtime. Okay, so the next one here is C allocate, okay? And it's a little bit different from this one. As you can see here, instead of having number multiplied size of ent, here I have number and then comma size of ent. So this is only like a little difference in how this function is um, somehow written, okay? But anyways, C allocate is doing the exact same thing, which is going to the memory, reserve again, if number equal 15, so in this case, 15 elements will be reserved in the memory, okay? And all of them will have size of int, which is four bytes, okay? Let me say it again. What is the difference between using M allocate and C allocate? Both of them are doing the exact similar thing. The only difference is that M allocate is actually not initializing the elements. You reserve the elements in the memory, right? M allocate is not initializing. What the meaning of not initializing, it just like leave any value in the memory already. This is why we name it as garbage value, right? Because we didn't decide anything about this value. It will go reserve the memory, whatever the previous values there are. But C allocate, the good thing about it is, it's actually going to initialize all the reserved memory locations to zero. Okay, let me show this first since we're already talking about it and then we return back uh, to continue afterwards. So if you look here, I'm starting with int asterisk array, okay? So here I'm just defining or declaring a pointer named array, right? And then here I'm using the syntax for m allocate, okay? And what is here, and, and then asterisk, this is what we call is casting. Just making sure that the type of my pointer is end, okay? And always when we are doing this, just to make sure that we are dealing with an end pointer. And here, m allocate five multiplied by size of end, okay? So I'm, I will reserve five elements. And then here, without doing any assignments. So I didn't put like the first element equals to seven or 15 or anything. I just want to print what is in the first element, okay? And let me just put this here. Okay, anyways. So I will just print the first element and see what is the value there, okay? And then going after that, I will just free the memory. Remember, free the memory will just delete everything. Now the assignment is not there anymore, okay? And then here, I will just do it again, but this time we'll use C allocate, okay? So using C allocate, what is going to do is going to reserve again five locations in the memory, but as we said before, C allocate is going to initialize all of them to zeros, right? So I will just, after that, print here, 
the value of the first element and after that th this will just print the address here okay so let me just take this here also anyways let's run it in this way and let's Can you see what happened? What is 928? Did I put anything in my program related to 928? I didn't put this number at all, right? So what is this number? This is the first print I have, which is here. This is the first print, right? The first print is saying print the value of the first element in the array, right? So when it printed the value of the first element, it just printed a garbage value. Why we are naming it as a garbage value? Because actually in this case, this value is coming from just a garbage value just located in the memory and that's it, right? But when you see the print, the print from T allocate, you'll find that it printed zero. Why? Because the first element actually, or all elements are initialized to zero. And this is the only difference between using M allocate and C allocate. M allocate is not cleaning up whatever in the memory. It's just leaving any previous values, okay? So if you, for example, are filling the values of the array by your program, and then you didn't fill the, the last three values and try to print your array, this may induce some error in your, not error, but maybe error values that you are going to get, right? So C allocate is safer so that it just initializing all the allocated memory to zero. So in this case, you are just going to um, start, uh, start from the beginning or printing from the beginning uh, and making sure that all elements are initialized. Okay, reallocate. Since you are going to reallocate an already allocated memory location, in this case, you have to give me the pointer name. Because I'm going to go to this pointer and reallocate the memory there, okay? And the reallocation here, actually, uh, let's say I'm in the memory. This is my memory here. And I allocated, let's say, one, two, one, two, three, four, okay? I did this allocation and this is here, for pointer. And let's say I have the next memory location is having other values not related to this one. So let's say it's now four and I want to reallocate it into maybe eight elements. So I started with four elements and I want to change that to double the size of my array from four to eight, okay? So what will happen here? If you can see, you'll find that I have four and then the other two elements after the four are already reserved. So the compiler will do the following. It will go to any other memory location, which is free, will copy the first four elements, put them there, and then we'll reserve the other four after that, okay? So again, with, with reallocate, it doesn't have to be in the same place, it doesn't have to be the same address. It may take the elements into another address, which is having the whole eight elements which are available to reserve, okay? So again, why I have here the pointer name, why it is important, because now you are reallocating. So you already have an allocated memory for a certain pointer and you are reallocating this memory for uh, other number of elements or double the number of elements. And finally, the last one here, which is free. And free here is taking the values, right? all the allocated memory will just clean that up and that's it. So now it is not allocated anymore. And it's very, very important that every time you are allocating memory, you are after finishing freeing this memory. So this is um, a nice representation for the same thing we just said. So here, this is for the M allocate, right? And here, this is for C allocate. This is for free and free actually is taking whatever 
you have and throw it in the garbage, right? So all the memory allocations will just be thrown to the garbage for this point. Okay, so let's start now by a program, which here it calculates the sum of n numbers entered by the user, okay? And as you can see here, why it's saying n numbers? Because now I don't know anything about the array size. The user will decide it, okay? So for example, a user want to add 15 numbers, 20 numbers, okay, as you like. Just when the program run, put the number of elements that you want to add and then start entering it and that's it, okay? So let's try to go uh, chunk by chunk in this program. So starting here, if you remember, I said you have to have standard library in order to be able to use M allocate or C allocate, right? And then next, I'm asking the user, enter the number of elements and then a scanning from the user and M. That's totally fine. We worked with that before. Next line, here it is. The pointer or the memory allocation, right? Remember, with the memory allocation, I'm not putting here any and or any asterisk, right? Because we are dealing with addresses now. And the pointer itself is the address, right? So what is this? As we said before, casting, just make sure that I'm working with a, an end pointer. If you before started with declaring this pointer as double, I'm just double checking here that, okay, this is end. I'm, I'm looking for the end size. So why we are doing this to avoid any errors. But if you are sure from your program, you can just take this away. That's totally fine, okay? And then here I have m allocate num multiplied by size of int. Num is decided by the user, right? And then multiplying it by size of int, just making sure that I'm reserving four bytes for each element. The very important step coming afterwards is this step, if you remember it. The dynamic memory allocation maybe will not go right. Maybe there is no memory to allocate this pointer. You will not get an error saying, hey, we don't have memory or something. No, at a certain point, you will get an error which is saying, core dumped, and that's it. So instead of doing this, just make sure to put your small condition there, which is F pointer is still pointing to null, please print this error, right? And with dynamic memory allocation, please always use this. Always. Anytime you are using dynamic memory allocation, you have to put this check, okay? Then, next, this is an important part. So here I will start by saying, for i equals to zero, i less than num plus plus i. Okay, I know this line and we did it a lot. But here, while I'm scanning the values, as you can see here, scan f percentage d pointer plus i. Okay, what's happening here? Let's, let's try to write it. Scan f and then here percentage d and here pointer plus i. What is happening here? If you remember, scan f as a function is actually going to take whatever you enter from the keyboard and put it in an address, right? And if you remember, in the beginning of the semester, we was putting if there, I have the variable is a, for example, I'm putting and a, right? To get the address of a. But if the pointer itself is the address, so I'm just pointing, putting there the pointer and that's it. So what is plus i? i here will start by zero, right? So the first thing here, I have i equals to zero. So this will go to the first element of the array, right? So pointer plus zero will just go to the first address of the array, okay? Then with the next iteration, you are going to scan again, right? So I have here will be pointer plus one. What is pointer plus one? If you remember with me, I will go to the address and add one, which is one multiplied by the type or size of the type, right? Which is here four bytes. So I will go down four bytes. So I will go to the next element of the array and scan to add the number. Then i equals to two, I will go to the next element and scan to it and so on. So it's very similar, if you remember, when we is having a regular array, and I'm just putting here a of i, right? Do you remember this? I was just having a of i, and then i equals to zero, I will go to the first element. i equals to one, I will go to the second element, and so on. So this is exactly the same here. Pointer plus i is going to go to the address of the first element, 
Next iteration, the address of the second element, address of the third element, address of the fourth element. With each, each iteration, we are going to go to each one, okay? So after having the scan here, it's saying after that, sum plus equals to asterisk pointer plus i. Okay, so I scan the number to the allocated memory, right? And then the next step is saying sum plus equals to asterisk pointer plus i. What I'm doing here, I'm going to pointer plus zero, the first element and array. Take it, add it to the sum, right? With the next iteration, pointer plus one. This is pointing to the next element, right? The asterisk here, get the value, add it to the sum. Get the value, add it to the sum. So every time you are going to point to the element, and then after that, you are getting the value, okay? So let me take a question here. What happens when we call size, size off on a pointer? So size off on a pointer, actually, and if you are using dynamic memory allocation, will give you the whole memory allocated to this pointer. So uh, this is why, actually, it is better to go with the type itself. So here it is end or uh, a double or like anything. I'm just going with the type, okay? So after going over, getting, scanning the elements and then adding them, the last thing here is just print the sum. So I printed the sum. And after printing the sum, what's the last step? Free. Free the memory, right? Take everything back. I just added my elements. I printed it, finished everything I'm doing with this here. Now free all the allocated memory, right? So you have here five allocated memory elements, right? So now you are going to free it. Once you have free, if you try to work with the pointer again, it will give you an error, right? The cool dumb. Why? Because the pointer now is not, not pointing to anything. You already freed the memory, okay? Okay, so let's see another example with uh, reallocate. So now we have an example just for allocating, right? So what about if you want to reallocate? So in this case, actually, with the reallocation, you will start by using m allocate or c allocate, and then after that, you will use the reallocate, right? So here in this program, I start with having and i, so this i here is a number, and then nums equals to uh, floats, and again, this is casting, right? And then c allocate five, and then size of float. So I'm using here c allocate to allocate five memory elements, right? And then after that, I have this for loop, which is saying for i equals to zero, i less than five, i plus plus, and then here it's saying nums of i equals to two multiplied by i. Whatever this is will get like values inside this array, which here the first one will be zero, the second one will be two, four, and so on, right? And then the next line is saying here nums equals to, again, casting, float, reallocate nums is giving me the name of the pointer, right? And then 10 multiplied by size of float. What I'm doing here, I was having five elements, right? And now I want to have reservation for 10 elements, not five, right? So again, if you are reserving this in the memory here, one, two, three, four, five. If you have another five here, that's totally fine. Just reserve them to get the 10. If this is not available, go to a new memory location, which is already having the 10 available and reallocate there. And then after reallocating there, the only thing will be done here is copying the value from here to here, copying the value from here to here and so on. And then you have the new values that you are going to assign by yourself, okay? Okay, we went with the demo with uh, C allocate and M allocate. As we said, one is just going with the memory, whatever the values there, the garbage values, and then the other one is initializing all elements. So 
Um, okay, since we are now out of time, uh, this was like the last slide here, uh, just showing again the reallocate, but this time with a string. So in this case, actually, you will start with uh, allocating using m allocate, and then here reallocate. And this time, actually, is just doing it with a string. So I think this this program is straightforward and very similar to uh, the previous one. So you can just um, go over it and read it. Uh, any questions for me? Yeah, a good question here. When you free a pointer, the pointer still exists, but it's set to null, right? Yes. So now the pointer is now, after using free, is not pointing to anything. Okay. So in this case, actually, it returned back to, we'll give an error, which is the core dump if you used it again without reallocating it. Okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much and we'll see you next week.